This is my main Mega Minx, the YJ Yuhu V2. It comes with 120 magnets in it, which I would say is a pretty good deal for just $14. Link below. But is 120 magnets really enough? If you've seen my channel before, you'll know that the answer is, of course not. I need to squeeze as many magnets into this thing as physically possible. And by the way, if anyone's curious where the number 120 comes from, it's because a Mega Minx has 30 edges, and if you look at each individual edge, it has to attract to this corner, which requires two magnets, as well as this corner, which requires another two magnets, so four magnets per edge times 30 equals 120. But the point is, those 120 magnets that come in the puzzle are only inside the edges and the corners. That's what gives you the nice magnetic click after you do each turn. The other use for magnets generally goes inside the centerpieces. It seems like it's becoming my new favorite word, and that is maglev, using the repelling of magnets to replace the springs in a puzzle. So just recently, I made what I believe to be the world's first maglev 2x2. Now adding maglev can make your cube quite a bit faster, but this cube was actually pretty fast to begin with, so that didn't make a lot of sense, plus it actually made it quite a bit less stable, so overall not a great trade-off. But the thing is, this 2x2 wasn't my main, adding maglev was more of just a fun proof of concept, so it doesn't really matter that I made it worse. This Mega Minx, on the other hand, is my main, and today we are going to be adding maglev to it, for better or worse. So if this video goes terribly wrong, then I'm literally going to have to buy a new Mega Minx. But I do have reason to believe that maglev is a good choice for this puzzle. First of all, like I just mentioned, maglev can make your cube a lot faster. That's because, compared to a spring, the magnets cause a lot less friction, while still retaining a similar level of springiness. So you still have the same corner cutting and everything, but it feels faster. Now I would describe this Mega Minx as almost fast enough, but I would definitely like it to be a touch faster. Faster. You can definitely feel that friction I'm talking about from the springs, and sometimes I feel like I have to flick really hard in order to get a full turn. So that increase in speed and decrease in friction should be perfect for this puzzle. Now as for stability, this is already a very stable cube in the first place, and once I tear it open, I'll show you why I believe adding maglev won't affect that negatively. Now the only real trade-off I can think of is the weight. Of course, adding big magnets to all the center pieces is going to make even a 3x3 noticeably heavier, and so doing it on a Mega Minx where you have twice as many center pieces is going to make it a lot heavier. Fortunately, the magnets we're using are pretty small, but we are going to need a lot of them. At least 2 per centerpiece, so 24 total, if not more if we decide they need to be stronger. But without further ado, let's go ahead and rip this puzzle open and see what we're working with. Depending on how these centerpieces are designed, it could make our lives very easy or very difficult. So once we get all these pieces off, we can go ahead and pop off the center cap just like this. And there is our screw and spring. So let's grab our screwdriver and see just how well, or realistically, just how poorly, these magnets will fit. Okay, so here we have the actual centerpiece, as well as screw, spring, and washer. Of course, we're going to be replacing this with just screw and magnets. So here's two of the little ring magnets that I'm going to use. The way that I'm going to do this is basically separate them, stick one of them onto the screw in one direction, and the other one on in the other direction, so that they'll be repelling, and then stick them on like that. And this springiness is the maglev. Now what we have to decide is whether or not that springiness is actually enough to replace the spring. An easy way to tell is to literally take the spring that came out of the cube and just squish it between your fingers, feel that force compared to the force of the magnets, and I can definitely tell that the magnets are a little bit weak right now, so I'm going to try maybe adding a third magnet onto here. And there we go, that makes things noticeably stronger, I would say that's now pretty comparable to the spring. Unfortunately that means we're going to need more magnets which will take up more space and make the cube heavier, but I think that is a worthwhile trade off to get the correct amount of springiness. So now what? Is it just as easy as replacing all the springs and screwing everything back together? Well, unfortunately not because of these centerpieces. As you can see, there's this nice big outer tube which would fit our magnets just perfectly, but on the inside there's also this little lip right here which is designed to prevent the head of the screw from going too far down, and unfortunately that'll also block the magnets from sitting where we need them. The way it is right now, the magnets would just sit on top of that lip, which means that the screw would be way too high, we probably wouldn't be able to get it screwed into the core, and the center cap definitely would not fit on. So what are our options? Well, we could try and remove that lip by, say, drilling very precisely down the middle of this tube to the exact right depth to get the magnets to sit where we want them, but that sounds super difficult, so instead, I'm just going to remove the entire tube altogether so that we basically just have a flat surface with a hole in it. Now, if you've seen my Maglev 2x2 video, that may sound like a horrible idea. Why? Well, because this tube is basically what keeps the screw upright. It keeps it from tilting back and forth in either direction, making the cube super unstable, like what happened on the 2x2. So why am I okay with removing it on the Mega Minx? Well, check this out. There's another tube on the bottom. So basically my thinking is, even if the upper tube is removed, there's still plenty of support down here on the bottom to keep the screw from tilting back and forth and to keep the cube stable. So I'm not too concerned. I think it'll work out just fine. Now the one tricky part about this plan is actually removing all that plastic. 
It's not all that difficult with the Dremel, it's just going to be very time consuming doing that on all 12 different pieces. So I guess, let's start the time lapse. All right, here are our finished centerpieces. It took about an hour of Dremel work, but as you can see, we got a nice flat surface on all 12 of them. So now we can go ahead and take our screw, stick it in there, and the magnets sit perfectly flat. And of course, the screw is at just the right height to screw into the core. So speaking of that, let's grab our core, get the rest of our magnets and our screws, as well as all the pieces of the cube, and get this Mega Minx put back together. All right, the Mega Minx is assembled and I went ahead and did some tensioning. I got it to the point where it's not quite pop resistant, but definitely feels about right for the springiness of a Mega Minx. It's always a little bit weird tensioning with Maglev because the thing that's preventing the cube from flexing any further is literally the two magnets touching each other rather than the screw hitting a little lip like it is with a spring. By the time that two repelling magnets are touching, they exert a lot more force than even when they're spread out just a little bit like this. And that's the genius of Maglev. When you have the cube just normally, you're not flexing it, there's not a whole lot of friction in your turns, whereas when you do flex it, it pushes back on you very quickly, and that gives you a nice cushion feel to the turning. Anyway, before I give you my final verdict, let's go ahead and get the center caps on, because I imagine these do add a bit of friction, as well as make the cube more stable. Alright, let me give you some first impressions on my new Maglev Megaminx, and it is fast. Not like crazy uncontrollably fast, but definitely a lot faster than it was out of the box, and I love it. I think the springs that come in this Mega Minx are just too strong to begin with, and you could probably improve it a lot simply by swapping it out with some weaker ones. That being said, this Maglev setup not only gives you the correct level of springiness, but it also reduces the theoretical amount of friction compared to a spring. I think that's maybe not quite as important in a Mega Minx because you have a lot of surface area in the pieces, and so you can't really reduce the friction beyond a certain set amount. That's compared to a 3x3 speed cube where you have fewer pieces rubbing together and all sorts of fancy friction ridges and all that. But still, it definitely makes a noticeable difference in terms of reducing friction. The Maglev also, as I predicted, doesn't really affect the stability of the cube, which is great, so those little tubes in the center pieces are doing their job. The only real difference I noticed in that area is sometimes it's a little bit easier to kind of smush and deform the layers accidentally as you're holding the cube like this, so I might have made it a little bit more flexible by doing those modifications, but that could also just be me getting used to the lack of friction, and I'm sure it won't be a problem in the long term. Like I mentioned, the only real downside is that the Mega Minx is considerably heavier, it's probably the weight of like two 3x3s now, but I mean, I spend half my Mega Minx solves with the cube set on the table anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Now if you remember with the 2x2, two two, I made a big deal about this being the world's first Maglev 2x2, two two. I looked around a bunch and couldn't find anyone else who had made one, and I figured it would probably be the same thing with the Mega Minx, but right before I started filming this, I searched YouTube, and sure enough, someone had made one exactly a year ago. I'll link that video in the description if you want to watch it. I just wanted to clarify that this is not the world's first Maglev Mega Minx. It probably is the first Maglev Yuhu V2 though, considering how much of a pain it was to make it. Which leads me straight into, would I recommend adding Maglev to a Mega Minx? Well, if you have to put in as much work as I did, dremeling out all the centerpieces like that, the answer is definitely no. Do not do that. That being said, if you can find a Mega Minx that allows Maglev without extensive modification, then yeah, I'd say go ahead, it'll definitely make your cube better. I think the other person did it with some Moyu Mega Minx, and I actually checked out my old Galaxy V2 and found that the centerpiece are nice and flat to begin with, which would have made things a whole lot easier. I should have looked inside this cube first. But yeah, all of that's assuming you have the money to buy all those extra magnets and do some experimentation with the sizes. Obviously, I got the size a little bit wrong. My magnets were a little bit too small for this Mega Minx, so I had to add three of them. And I guess the thing I really learned in this video is if you want a really good and cheap Mega Minx, just buy a Yuhu V2 and put some weaker springs in it. It's only $14. Again, link will be down in the description. Discount code Z3Cubing for 5% off anything at thecubicle.com. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you all enjoyed this little Maglev adventure, and I'll see you guys next time.